Hey guys, welcome back to Car Guy Fridays. It's the first day of winter, and uh, so we're in the garage doing car things. Um, my car, uh, if you don't remember, started pushing some coolant. This was back in the summer when I had it on the dyno. We actually have a video of that. Oh wow, it's... It was like very rich as well. And the, the coolant temp is super high right now. Like insanely high. Wow, why? Finally got my built head back from the machine shop to replace the head that's on my car. Let's talk a little bit about this head. The stock valve springs on the NB are known weak spot. They're actually the lightest valve springs of any BP head. There's a lot of different valve springs out there. A lot of guys do Volvo valve springs, and that's kind of like the cheap option. I couldn't find any probably because of the coronavirus, <laughs> and I just decided to get Super Tech uh, double valve springs. So they're kind of hard to see because they're already installed down here, but Super Tech heavy doubles. They're 72 pound valve springs. Uh, titanium retainers. I had my uh, my guy at the machine shop do a, and you're not really going to see it too well, but these are stock valves. They've actually got a five angle valve job and they have a back cut. Now the back cut you can't see. What the back cut does is it, when the air exhaust is passing over the valve, it's just a smoother flow path for the valve. Of course, he surfaced the whole head. And this was probably the reason why my head gasket had an issue in the first place. When I built my motor about two and a half years ago, the head that I put on my car, I didn't have it surfaced. Oh. I just scotch brighted it until it looked decent and just threw it on the car. And it was fine when I was running the smaller uh, 2560 turbo. But after I put the larger 2860R uh, Gen 2 on it, and it was running more boost, more cylinder pressure. I started having coolant issues. Probably one of these coolant jackets here is getting pressurized uh, where the head gasket's not sealing anymore and it's pushing combustion into my coolant. My coolant has this like really weird smell, kind of smells like fuel. So not every time, you know, when you blow a head gasket, it's not always gonna be catastrophic and you're not always gonna have milk in your oil. We're gonna put a, just a stock head gasket on it with uh, ARP head studs the high boost ones that Super Miata sells, and those are torqued to 90 foot pounds instead of 65. Let's put this back down and we'll walk over to the car and take a look at the engine bay. This is a Fly Miata turbine outlet. Probably slightly restrictive in there, but I'm gonna pour it out the turbine wheel side, not the wastegate wheel side. I'm just gonna to try to open it up, see if I can get more flow out of that. We're gonna document the process of pulling the head off, and we're not gonna show you every little thing, but just like the most important stuff for you guys that like to, to do your own DIY stuff. I wanna get started pulling everything apart, and I hope you all enjoy. These are always some of the most annoying to get. Oh boy. None of this stuff acts like it wants to come out. Like. All right, so we're making some progress on pulling the head. Got the throttle body pulled off. Here's the pile of parts over here if you want to look. Throttle body is pulled off. Upper intake manifolds pulled off. I got the whole wiring harness. Most of the wiring harness on a Miata engine, like, is over here. Your injectors and all that stuff. Really, the only thing over here is the uh, crank sensor, and then there's a little sensor for your power steering pump down here. The rest of the wiring harness just kind of folds over there. You take the upper half of the intake manifold off, that lets you get to that harness. 
Disconnect the coil pack, of course. Heater core bypass hose here that we'll just loosen it from here because you know it's harder to get to down under there. But that one has to come off. When you have a flying Miata turbo, you, you would think you could just pull it right off. Like, so you have the manifold, the turbo, and the um, turbine outlet. And after you loosen all these bolts, there's not quite enough room to pull it off. One little trick, so when you're under the car, you loosen the driver's side motor mount. Not all the way, just a little bit. And then that'll allow you to jack up the engine a little bit, and it'll give you more room on the shelf over here. And it'll allow you to pull out the whole manifold turbo and um, turbine outlet all as one piece. Got all the valve cover bolts off, the um, catch can line, coil pack is off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy off. It's always fun to look under the head. You know what? I'm getting pretty good at taking this turbo off. Turbo me out of life. We're gonna use the oldest jack in existence to jack the driver's side of the car up. Isn't that the oil pan? Huh? Driver's side of the oil pan, not the car. Right. But uh, use wood and be very gentle. We don't want to be breaking stuff. Come on, Jack. I gotta take the this coupler off. That coupler is so hard to get on, and then once you get it on, it never ever wants to come off again. That's rude. That's wrong. And out comes the turbski. Pretty cool. Huh. Hey. Nothing came out of it. I guess that's what happens when you drain it already, huh? Good old petrol. 93 octane over here in the States. What is that? Like a combination of an Australian accent and British? Like, that's terrible. And I'm sorry. And we're going to pull this head off. We're going to leave the lower intake manifold attached. It makes sense to just pull it off with the manifold attached, it's much easier. There we go, so, oof. pouring a little fuel. Who else likes to smell the gas? I do, I don't know why. Ah, oh, damn it, every time you think you can take the head off, there's something else you have to take off. Yep. Oh, goodness gracious. You're in my way. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Here, just put that down for a second and help me. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's so much heavier than you expect. Oh. Whew. 
Whew, it's out. That's good. Let's look at the head gasket and see if we can ascertain where maybe it was leaking. All right, so just real quick, we pulled the head gasket off. I just want to show you all. So I'd never surfaced the head. This is the head side of the head gasket and it was leaking compression in between every cylinder. Basically anywhere where it's silver is where it was leaking compression. You can see it leaking into the water jackets there and right here and a little bit right there. Cylinder compression when it leaks eats through the gasket. Now if we flip it over, this is the block side and the block still looks amazingly good and I mean maybe a tiny bit there but you can see it was sealing perfectly. Thanks for watching part one of our two-part Miata head swap series. Next week, we're going to be swapping the intake cam, installing the head, and doing a virtual dyno pull to see what difference the built head made. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss the next Miata head swap video. If there were other parts we didn't cover, please let us know down in the comments, and don't forget to hit like since you clearly liked it if you made it this far. See you next week. Peace out.